Hey guys, so I'm Angel Valance, Life Fit Mama, and I'm basically an emotional eater overcomer and now a high fat enthusiast. Now, you don't have to subscribe to a higher fat lifestyle in order to follow me because I am able to, by way of the challenge groups that I host, I'm able to help my clients with being able to first learn about portion control and, you know, eating at an adequate calorie range that, you know, you're, you're feeling great and still losing weight and able to do it in the way that is in agreement with your body. Um, but for me, I'm going to talk today about one of the things that I stopped doing um, that I used to do at the beginning of my fitness journey when I was first trying to lose weight. And let me put this disclaimer out there. When I was first starting to lose weight, I only counted calories because I thought that was all I needed to do. That was all that I was ready to try to conquer at the time. And so, yeah, I used to eat... Oatmeal, this was a typical breakfast for me. I'm going to share why I don't eat this way anymore and why I choose different foods for my first meal of the day. So my first meal of the day, tell me if this is kind of like what your breakfast looks like and if it looks different, let me know what, what it is that you eat. But for me, I used to start every morning with um, oatmeal usually with fruit and nuts in it. And um, sometimes I would um, even put in there maybe a protein powder that um, would you know increase the, um, the protein or I'd have it with some eggs. But almost always I had some kind of oatmeal with fruit and probably yogurt or a bagel, a healthy bagel, you know, or even the thin ones, the bagel thins. And um, if I felt like, you know, I'm going to let myself have a treat for breakfast or whatever. Then, get this, I would get one of those, have those big muffins, like the Costco muffins. Now listen, my husband just went and bought some for my kids. Look, I'm like avoiding them like the plague. But um, look, I promise I've not been eating any of them. But the struggle's real, okay? Because I know how much goodness that dark chocolate muffin tastes like. But here's what would happen to me whenever I would eat like that. Um, oh, and side note, funny gig, is that when I would eat some of those muffins, I would only eat like, I would tell myself, okay, I'm only going to eat half, right? Because remember, I was calorie counting. And so I thought, if I just eat half of it, then um, I'm getting my treat, but I'm still staying in my diet plan or whatever. So anyway, that's just a funny little note, like the psychology that I was subscribed to at the time. And I thought, I mean... Look, if, if you were like me, I had to learn how to not beat myself up over these kinds of choices as, you know, as over the years, I've just become more educated and maybe making different choices. So if you eat carb, bre carb breakfast or first meal of the day is heavy carb and you feel great, then keep rocking on with your bad self. But for me, I don't like to say good or bad foods. I don't like to say good or bad practices, but... I do believe in listening to your body and knowing that you are your body's only advocate. Um, if I don't feel good in my body, if I'm not seeing the results that I want to see, if I am feeling you know, like my energy or my health is suffering, I'm the only one who can do something about it and I'm the only one who is aware of it. And it doesn't matter how much I talk about it and somebody can tell me, even my doctor can tell me, well, you know, you're in a healthy weight range or whatever, if I don't feel like, if I feel like something is off and something is not right, I'm the only one who can make the change and find what works for me. So when I would eat these heavy carb breakfasts, and I mean, so like the oatmeal and the, and the muffins and, and things like that, and even in the beginning, whenever um, I was struggling with, because I used to not eat breakfast at all. I used to eat, just have coffee in the morning, and um, I would not eat breakfast because I wasn't hungry. But when I was counting calories and, and trying to lose weight, I was taught that I needed to eat breakfast. And so that's when, you know, I started with a banana, and then I slowly you know, built my hunger up because basically I trained my body to be hungry first thing in the morning and that's when I started reaching for the things that I was told I needed to eat in order to be healthy, the oatmeal and all that stuff. So 
But what I noticed was when I was eating those things, my my energy was like this. It was like I would get, I would feel really great and awesome and then it would dip down and sometimes it would dip down like really low. Like I just felt like I would crash. And I remember being really scared um, and noticing when I first started to notice that it was starting to get out of hand was whenever I was driving to pick up my kids from um, school and I was literally driving and nodding off. In the middle of the day, y'all, like 2.30, okay? So, I mean, I was just like, something is wrong. If I can't go down the street for, you know, five, ten minutes at a time without feeling like, you know, I've been at the wheel for 15 hours and I need to pull over and take a break. I mean, that, that's just not right, you know? I shouldn't feel like that. I, sh it, it, I shouldn't feel like I'm crashing in, in the middle of the day. The other thing that I hated was that I always felt like I was hungry. Like every, I could time it, you know, every two to three hours I would feel hungry. And like I would feel like, oh, I'm okay, I need to reach for more food. Um, and I just, the reason why I didn't like that was because one, nobody likes to feel hungry, right? Um, I, and, but the other thing was I felt like I was a slave to always having to think about food. Like, what am I eating next? What am I eating next? And it has to be healthy and it has to be so many calories so that it fits in my diet and I don't run out of calories before I get to dinner and then go to bed starving and then wake up starving, you know, like, or wake up, you know, so it just was like this endless kind of thing and I felt miserable. I felt like I was, like I said, I just felt like I was miserable. I was always hungry. I was always trying to think about what the next meal was going to be and would panic if there was, I mean, it sounds funny to say it, but literally I would kind of stress about, oh my God, like I didn't plan for my next meal. What am I going to eat? I'm feeling hungry now. I, there's no way that I can get anything to eat right now. You know, you know what I'm saying? And I just hated always feeling like that. So between the energy crashing and then the constant hunger and the always feeling like, I had to, like, every, my whole day was ran by what I was going to eat next. And I just, I didn't know at the time that it was tied to the choices of foods for my first meal. I, I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on. So I just thought this is normal or this is, like, what dieting means. And I'll tell you, whenever I was, um, I, I was in dance growing up and, I mean, through high school, when I started to notice that, you know, puberty had hit and I was struggling, I was one of the girls struggling with weight that none of the other girls in class had to struggle with, I started trying to diet in different kinds of ways. And so I just hated that whole kind of vicious cycle thing. I hated having to think about my food and um, and, and the calories and, and, the, and the whole thing. And then it was just frustrating just to, you know, all get out. So anyway... But I didn't know, I didn't know, it wasn't until I came across the um, higher fat, lower carb life. Now, uh, like I said, I'm not saying that you have to be an advocate of it or that you practice it at all yourself. What I, I'm just sharing this one little part of what I learned about how my, how my body responded to that first meal of the day. Because when I switched to a higher fat lifestyle, I had to, instead of choosing oatmeal and um, what's the, I used to love it, cream of wheat kind of stuff, yeah, I used to love eating those, and instead of bagels, even the healthy bagels, instead of whole wheat bread toast and whole grain toast and all those things, I had to reach for something else. So I had to learn how to reach for protein, which was the same for me because before, remember, I knew I needed to reach for a protein. And I needed, um, in, but instead of reaching for the grains, I had to replace it with a fat source. So instead of oatmeal and eggs, I started eating like bacon and eggs and uh, avocado, right? And so I would still have my little sauteed spinach or whatever, but I would cook it in a co coconut oil or whatever, so, right? So here's what would happen. My insulin wouldn't spike because those foods 
create a significantly lower uh, spike in insulin. So my blood sugar levels were like more steady and I wasn't hungry two or three hours later. Y'all, in, in fact, um, I was finding that I would, you know, have my first meal and I probably wouldn't be hungry again until like four o'clock in the afternoon, but yet I wasn't crashing at 2.30 like I was before. So it was like win-win, you know, because I, and so, but at that point, you know, I was still just trying this stuff out. I didn't know what I was doing, but when I started to look back and, and um, realize like, hey, like I'm feeling better and I'm not being ruled by hunger and cravings all day long. I'm not in this endless vicious cycle of every two or three hours. I feel like I need to reach for something to eat. Not only because I'm not hungry, but also I don't feel like my energy is suffering like, oh, I need to eat something because I'm feeling sluggish or I need another cup of coffee because I'm feeling tired or, you know, whatever. Those things just kind of stopped happening and I was able to um, realize that it was all tied to those first food, the, the first meal of the day, the food choices that I was reaching for. So again, may not be the right thing for you. You may eat oatmeal in the morning and feel fantastic. And that's great. I'm not trying to, you know, tell you to stop doing what's working for you. I'm just saying maybe because it's all tied in with hormones and um, we're all individual in those things and, you know, how our body reacts to the sugars and the carbs and, and in our foods, is it, it could be different. And some of us have a higher or lower threshold than others. So what really sends me off and affects my energy to the nth degree may only bother you a little bit, right? What is just like someone who has like a dairy intolerance, someone who is able to eat ice cream or uh, and not get tummy rumbles or, you know, bad bloating or whatever, another person can't, you know? So if you approach it from that kind of standpoint, then you realize that I'm not talking about dieting for the sake of any kind of um physical appearance, you know, aesthetic reasons. That part d does come as a side effect of, you know, making these choices. I made the choice though based on how I felt. When I started playing with that first meal of the day and realizing how much my hunger and energy and everything was improved and that I just started, oh, and my sleep got better too, which also contributed, of course, to my energy levels. So um, when so that at that point I was able to say, I don't eat carbs in, for breakfast in the, in the morning anymore as a regular practice because I want to feel good through my day. And it's like a, more of like a choice that I make for me and the, and, and my, and the quality of my day. You know, I, it's a, so it's a choice that you make for yourself, that you make for you. Like what, how do I want to feel today? Maybe, so this is how you would test it out, right? I love this. I love this test, okay? So let's say you say, Angel, I want to test this out for myself. I wonder if we have similar body types or, you know, hormone levels or, you know, if my body would react the way that yours did or if I'm like a carb-happy person. So try this test out for yourself and see how you feel. So on day, on just pick a day, okay? So on day one, I want you to have a carb-heavy breakfast. So have a bowl of oatmeal or cream of wheat with lots of fruit, like a fruit bowl or something. And I'm not preaching against fruit either. I'm just saying, you know, these are foods that spike our insulin and we normally would put together, right? So have your bowl of oatmeal um, with maybe even some nuts on it, which is a healthy fat, but with some fruit and maybe one of those um, low fat yogurts or something that is a higher carb kind of ratio or have your bagels or have that muffin with a banana or whatever. And then see when am I next hungry um, and pay really close attention to how you feel energy wise. And um, you know, if you feel like your blood sugars are going up or down, maybe you write it down, maybe you make a note of it or whatever. Then the next day, let's try something different. I want you to have your first meal of the day be 
like three or four eggs and two to four slices of bacon. Cook your eggs in coconut oil. Cook your if cook your spinach um, in or in in coconut oil or an extra virgin olive oil or have a slice of avocado with it. Um, or even tomatoes. I used to love, I really like tomatoes in my spinach. I like the, the combination. Or, you know, have an omelet, a three or four egg omelet with, you know, like Italian sausage in it and, um, you know, the breakfast sausage crumbled or whatever, or bacon. And, and, and just, but um, I would say avoid dairy for this meal just, just because, just in case you have some kind of sensitivity to dairy and you don't know about it, I don't want it messing with how you feel, okay? So make Make that on day two um, or three, like maybe a day or so if you want. And then pay attention to, okay, how do I feel two or three hours later? Do I feel hungry or do I feel pretty good? And so, and like when do I get hungry again? And how is my energy on this day three hours later compared to how my energy was the other day whenever I had the high carb breakfast and kind of, you know, judge it out for yourself. Now, if you're like, oh, I can't really tell a big difference, then maybe do it for two or three days of one way, take a two or three day break, and then do two or three days of the other way and really start to pay attention to how you feel and decide for yourself if maybe this could be a really great answer for you, transitioning to a higher fat, lower carb breakfast style, at least for your first meal of the day. Now, I've shared before that I also do intermittent fasting, So, but at the time that I was just testing this out, I was not intermittent fasting. I was still having my breakfast like in the morning, whenever I, you know, had, felt hungry or whatever. Now it's different, but I don't want you to think that you have to do that in order to test it out. It's all about the quality of the fuel that you're giving your body that that so it can you can feel the difference of how your body uh how you your energy your 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 sugar levels all those things how good you feel when your body is using sugar as its energy source versus how your body feels when it's using the fats that you feed it as an energy source, okay? Because the fat is actually a cleaner fuel, and um, your but your body reaches for the sugar first. So if we're always eating sugar first, or carb-heavy meals that convert to sugar immediately, then our body is only ever burning that sugar. And it's not giving given the opportunity to burn fat. Um, body fat or dietary fat versus if we feed it dietary fat, it will burn through the di dietary fat first, but then it's able to start digging into our body fat stores, which was what first intrigued me to even try high fat, low carb in the first place. Okay, so I think I've gone through all my points that I wanted to share with you. So then obviously, so pros the, the reasons that I stopped, just to recap, the reasons I stopped eating a carbs for breakfast was because I got tired of feeling the dips, the ups and downs in my energy and blood sugar throughout the day, feeling like my blood sugar, my energy was spiking and then crashing. And I got tired of feeling constantly hungry and feeling like I had to have something healthy to eat every two to three hours. Second, I stopped eating uh, whenever I did make the whenever I started reaching for foods that were um, higher in fat and protein and vegetables for my first meal of the day I just noticed that my hormone I mean my my energy levels were steady um, I wasn't having blood sugar crashes I wasn't having a constant up and down uh, wave of emotions too really but of energy and I wasn't hungry. I had a sustainable energy without a constant two to three hour cyclical hung hunger. That left me feeling miserable before when I was making those other carb heavy choices for my breakfast. So that's it, that's my tip for today. I wanted to be able to share that little bit of an insight into 
how I eat. So in, if you are one of those like me that you started to feel like, you know, you're noticing that you're crashing in the afternoon and your, or your, your energy levels are suffering or your, um, that you feel like your blood sugar levels are always wonky and all over the place, your sleep is suffering, you know, or you're just miserable trying to always have to keep up with the hunger, then maybe you try the higher fat breakfast and see how you feel. It worked for me. So you guys have a great day. Feel free to leave all the questions for me that you have down below. I don't mind sharing. I'm an open book. And um, so any questions that you have, make sure to go back and watch the replay if you jumped in late. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.